By pressing the numbers on the top of the remote, the person wearing the corresponding numbered bracelet would be instantly electrocuted and fall to the ground. Glenn would give each of the three remotes to each of the three voted in kings, who would then decide how to use them, whether to punish the others or threaten them to vent their desires was up to the kings themselves. Kelly had died trying to protect Nick. He originally wanted to avenge his girlfriend's death, but to his surprise, Glenn told him that all the previous experiments were actually to test Nick's nature, to see if he could be under extreme circumstances, maintain the goodness inside. As for the other students, they were just control subjects, as long as the environment could be created extreme enough. It didn't matter if some people died, Nick's cycle logical defense was completely shattered, and what was even more unexpected was that Glenn actually handed Nick the gun and told him to shoot himself directly. As long as he shoots and kills Glenn, not only can he avenge his girlfriend, but also completely end this inhumane game. However, no matter how much Glenn hit him on, he couldn't do it after all. In his opinion, one shot to kill Glenn is too simple. He must be tried in court. Revenge is a meaningless act. Nick chose to let Glenn off the hook for now, but at the same time became a target because of it. And some even felt that Glenn and Nick were in cahoots. He's hiding alone in the stairwell, fuming, and George had wanted to go over and comfort him. But to his surprise, Nick tells him to strangle himself and even turns around and pins him down. When he sees that George won't do that, threatening to strangle him himself if he doesn't do as he's told. As George was about to lose his breath, Nick came to his senses and kept apologizing to George. The two of them had just returned to the classroom. Glenn then announced a new round of the King's Game, where the elected King had the privilege of not only punishing anyone who displeased him with the remote control motor in his hand, but also getting to pistols. Because as far as Glenn was concerned, his experiment was over. Everyone was divided into three groups, which appeared to be random on the surface. But in fact, the members of each group had very deep conflicts. But to Glenn's surprise, the voting process of two of the groups groups was very harmonious, and despite the conflicts between them, after a few rounds of the game, everyone seemed to have looked away, no longer dwelling on the past, but working together to face the challenges of the moment. As long as they kept their normal mindset, they were sure to get through. However, the situation of the third group is not so ideal. Although there are teachers among them, the presence of the home teacher has always been very low, and Anthony, who wants to be the king, forces everyone to elect him as the king by force despite the opposition. One hour later, Glenn gathers everyone into a new classroom, and everyone except the king is put on a special bracelet. At first, everyone is not sure what is going on, until Glenn pushes the button and after the classroom teacher is instantly electrocuted and falls to the ground, they realize they've been duped again. Nick sees that something is wrong, and tries to rush over to snatch the remote control, but he gets everyone involved. Now that everyone knew the horrors of the bracelet, Glenn next gave the motor remote to the three kings to keep an eye on each member, during which time the kings could do whatever they wanted. After announcing the rules of the game, everyone was taken back to the classroom by their respective kings. The female king of Group D decided to follow Nick's previous strategy. As long as they did nothing for this next hour, they would surely pass the level. So she put the remote control in the center of the field and started talking to everyone about their elementary school crushes as a way to pass the time. The second group that Nick was in was in a bit of trouble. The girl who had been beaten up by the group before had been trying to snatch the remote. She wanted her former best friend to have a taste of being beaten up as well. But with Nick pressed, even if the king of their group was weaker, it was unlikely that she would be allowed to continue to fight violence with violence. As for the third group, the situation was not so harmonious, and then he takes all his anger out on the group because of his own breakup, and almost all four people in the group have been tasered by him. Nelson just couldn't handle being electrocuted any longer and fell back on Anthony, becoming his lapdog and helping to torture the others. To Anthony, something so crazy had become normal. Glenn saw everything through the surveillance, and just as he was contemplating which king to give the gun to, he suddenly heard what appeared to be a noise in the classroom. But when he walked over to the sound, he realized there was no one around. Perhaps he had heard a noise in the next room. The other two groups all ran to the third group's room. Until then, Anthony was somewhat collected, and when he saw the others on the floor being electrocuted to death, they all stepped in together to snatch the remote control from Anthony's hand. Breaking his kingly dream, the hour had come and gone, but there was no sign of Glenn, so Nick found his office. But to his surprise, it was Glenn lying on the floor. He seems to have been attacked, was strangled alive, the mastermind behind the death, in the end who killed him. Is this really the end of the student's experiment? 